Lights are sparkling again in the London we love. London, the great cosmopolis. The world with other worlds within it. And it all belongs to you. London, where you can circle the globe in an evening. Just a stone's throw from Eros, and you're lost in strange countries. You don't believe me. Then let's go. First stop, China. Not Limehouse, but a chip off the Orient, lying on your very doorstep in the heart of London. Here, east meets west across a table. Hungry? Some people say all Chinese food tastes alike. The truth is you won't find it's equal for variety and range of exotic flavors. You see, even today, Chinese menus detail over a hundred different dishes. And if you can't read Chinese, they're printed in English too. With a standard number for each dish wherever you go. Rice went off the menu about 1943. You can barely get barley now. Those succulent bamboo shoots are off too. Now you get homegrown bean shoots in your chop suey. Only the pandas at the zoo get the real stuff. If you'll take my advice, don't try this. It's hard on shirt fronts unless you were born with a silver chopstick in your mouth, and most people do it Occidental style anyway. And even if the girlfriend's easy to impress, Chinese waiters, confidentially, are not. Here, there's music in that South American way. Strictly the place is for members only, but um, uh, yes, uh, they're friends of mine. Oh, just sign the book, sir, please. And we're right on time for a number from Jimmy Cummings' band. Brazil, it's Mother India calling. Indian cooking has already lost its undeserved reputation of being the exclusive diet of ex-army officers from Pune and all points east. And you certainly don't need to come from east of Suez to know the kick of curried chicken and piquant chutneys. Transported from India, along with other richly carved furnishings. And we are transported too. The illusion of another world is complete. The regular diners here, immunized against the potency of Indian curry at its hottest, are apt to decry the super-sensitive Western palate. But the boys home from Siak prove a curious point about this food. Once bitten by a Bombay duck, and you just can't lose the habit. The comb marks this waiter as a Singalese, as surely as a bowler hat marks a Briton. Believe it or not, her name's Molly, and her mother's English. 
She comes to our table like a princess from an Indian love lyric, or should it be in Pakistan? Cup of tea, sir. Thanks, and make mine Indian. If you're in the mood Muscovite, let's take a droshky to one of London's most famous Russian restaurants. Bloomsbury for the wilder souls, but here it's the atmosphere of the old Russia. But uh, please, no politics tonight. And uh, if you should be dragged into a heavy argument, well, just keep your fingers crossed for the man with a balalaika, Nicholas Medvedev. Thank you. 